if you were exposed to toxic hazards during military service, you could be eligible for some additional advantages with VA. Hi, we're from CCK, the country's leading veterans law firm. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Terra or Toxic Exposure Risk Activity. We're going to provide some information you need to know about Terra related benefits and VA disability claims. And if you think others would benefit from this video, please give it a like. So what does VA consider a toxic exposure risk activity or Terra? VA recently updated guidelines for claims processors reviewing PACT Act claims and appeals. Among those updates were new definitions for the terms toxic exposure, toxic exposed veteran, and toxic exposure risk activity. According to the M21-1 Adjudication Procedures Manual, as well as 38 CFR Parts 3 and 4, a TERRA is defined as any activity that requires corresponding entry and an exposure tracking record system, or that VA otherwise determines qualifies for purposes when taking into account what is reasonably prudent to protect the health of veterans. So in short, the government actually tracks certain hazards um, and which service members work near them so that veterans are now considered exposed. And um, for the record, the primary tracking system is called the Longitudinal Exposure Record. Uh, shorthand is I-L-E-R, and it's a collaboration between VA and the Department of Defense. So what hazards qualify? VA provides a long list of examples. It includes air pollutants like burn pits and sulfur fires, chemicals like pesticides and herbicides, occupational hazards like asbestos and lead paints, and more. You can find a more in-depth list on VA's public health website, which we've linked in the description below. These examples are not meant to be exhaustive, but they do give a better idea of what VA considers to be Terra. And if this all sounds a little bit overwhelming, um, there are two key pieces of information that are helpful. First, one of the most popular Terra-related benefits doesn't even require filing a disability claim. Veterans who participated in a Terra during their service are automatically eligible to enroll in VA healthcare without applying for VA benefits. And this applies to veterans who served both domestically and abroad. So if you served in the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, Iraq, Afghanistan, the Global War on Terror, or any other combat zone after 9-11, or never deployed but were still exposed to toxins or hazards while training or on active duty in the United States, you are still eligible to enroll. And you can apply for these VA healthcare benefits right now on VA's website. And second, when it comes to actual claims, VA's legal duty to assist means they need to help figure out whether Terra applies to you. So whenever you file a PACT Act related claim, VA is supposed to proactively look for evidence of exposure. And if they find evidence of exposure, they create what's called a Terra memo. And this memo compiles all the exposure information they have and adds it to your file for me medical examiners to use um, to, establish, to establish service connection. Now, don't be discouraged if the Tara memo doesn't mention your exposure specifically. The Tara memo is not an end-all be-all and can, you can still argue exposure if your exposure is not specifically in the memo. If the information in your Tara memo is still not sufficient to establish service connection for your exposure-related conditions, then, according to USC 1168, VA cannot automatically deny the claim. Instead, they must take further steps to help the veteran through VA's duty to assist. In most cases, VA should schedule a special CMP exam specifically to see if you can establish Terra related service connection. Another way that VA's duty to assist comes into play is that if VA previously denied your claim under circumstances where the Terra changes might have helped you, then VA must inform you that they can now submit a new supplemental claim uh, with Terra serving as new and relevant evidence. Now, it's wise not to uh, rely on VA's exposure tracking system alone to establish toxic exposure, um, because even if VA concedes that you participated in a Terra, they can still deny a claim by stating that there's no link between the Terra and the current disability. So uh, your claim or appeal should still include the evidence that we, you would use in any other claim, like service treatment records, personnel records, lay statements, uh, private treatment records, uh, and any other supporting evidence you might have. 
Now, you may be thinking, how do veterans submit a VA disability claim related to Tara? VA added a section to VA Form 21-526CZ, which is the application for disability compensation specifically related to toxic exposure. The toxic exposure section on the form is intended to streamline the process for veterans filing these types of claims by ensuring that VA can more easily recognize and process them. By providing information about exposure in the section, veterans help VA to determine eligibility for benefits under the PACT Act and to assess whether a special TARA exam or medical opinion is necessary. Now, we've tried to make this information as accessible as possible, but these are admittedly complicated topics for such a short video. If your terror related claim was denied, we might be able to help. As the nation's largest law firm practicing veterans law, we have over 300 years of combined experience helping veterans win the benefits they rightfully deserve. And we're dedicated to helping veterans exposed to toxins receive their compensation. Visit our website now for a free case evaluation. So thank you for tuning in um, and remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the latest news on VA disability benefits. Take care.